Hey everybody, this is Michelle Simon, uh, checking back in on everybody. Hope you enjoyed last week's session with Farm Start. Um, if you haven't seen the news, everything is being shut down a little while longer. So um, for better or worse, this program is gonna continue online. So the rest of the sessions will all be offered in the same format, either by a YouTube link. Um, some of them might try a live webinar. If they do, I'll send out directions with that as well. Um, please send in those participant surveys that I sent out. A lot of the speakers are wanting to know about you all so they can gear their talk to you to make sure it's all relevant information that they're giving. So if you email that back to me, mail it to me, either one is fine. Uh, you don't have to send it back in that format. If you just answer the questions in an email and send it, that'll work just fine. Uh, we'll have the conference call option again this evening from seven to eight o'clock, just like we did last week. So that, there's that number there, you can call in from that or you can click on that link and that'll take you to a video conference, kind of like what I'm doing right now as well. Uh, so there's options if you have questions. Um, so this week we're gonna be talking about the ag lending world. What grants, loans, resources, all that good stuff, what all is out there, what all you need to be thinking about um, as you're looking to buy, as you're refinancing or any of those other situations that might come into play. Um, so the presentation that I'm going to be showing you next is actually with the Farm Service Agency. So he was not able to uh, record anything, but he did send me the presentation. So just kind of a disclaimer up front, if you have questions, he'll be the one that can answer those for you. So let me pull that up. Okay, here we go. So the Farm Service Agency is a part of the United States Department of Ag. Um, if, if you're not familiar with them yet, they're actually downstairs in the same building as us. So we're really lucky here in Boone County. We've got extension upstairs. We've got natural resources, conservation, and farm service agency all in one building. So that's a, a great asset to have. If you have not been down there yet, I encourage you to do so. Uh, most of the time, people have been down there to get their farm serial number. You need that to set up your tax exempt status, different things like that. So if you haven't, uh, all you have to have is a deed to go in and get that number. So I encourage you to go down there. You need to be reporting on your crop acres, different things like that. We'll go into more detail on that. Um, but so this presentation is directly geared towards people considered new or beginner farmers. So the most basic definition of this is an individual who has not operated a farm for more than 10 years. Uh, they're gonna be the ones to tell you the details of that. Uh, the other extenuating circumstances that might change any of those uh, things that make you qualify or anything like that. So it talks about here about owning real estate property exceeding the 30% of the average acreage in the county as well where that property is located. Uh, they're there for customer service. So they strive to provide the most effective and efficient customer service to farmers. Um, so there is the website that you can go on there and look at some of the different programs that they offer, where the service centers are. Uh, the Boone County office covers Boone, Kenton, and Campbell, and just recently are, have started covering Carroll and Owen as well. So they cover a pretty wide distance. They're here on Mondays and Tuesdays, and then they're in Owen County on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. And I think Friday is kind of a, it, de it depends on the week where they're going to be at, but they're always available by phone if you have questions, especially right now, they're not allowed to have people come in kind of like us. So calling ahead is definitely a good practice to get in the habit of. Uh, but they do have a lot of loans and different programs available specifically for new farmers or beginning farmers. So it's definitely worth checking out if you think you might qualify. Um, <clears throat> they also provide programs that deal with farm production and conservation. Uh, a lot of this, you'll just have to go in there with a map. If you've applied for CAPE funding and you're putting up any kind of fence, you need to talk to them to have your fence lined out where you're building that at to turn in with your receipts. Uh, but they work with all the technical assistance part of this, commodity lending, disaster programs. Uh, there's kind of the three sections there under USDA. Farm Service Agency with, is uh, pertaining to this presentation. Natural Resources Conservation Service. We'll talk about them more in a little bit and also the risk management agency. <clears throat> so for FSA, um, there's a, these are a lot of the different programs that are lined out here. Uh, the FLP is money to purchase land, get crops in the ground. Acreage reports is sort of the reporting system. So if you signed up for the text messages to receive updates, that's where they're asking you to come in and report how many acres you're gonna have in corn, how many you're gonna have in beans, how much is in hay, uh, if you have any conservation reserve program land, that's where you talk about that stuff. 
Um, they've got the programs with insurance for crops, uh, storage facilities for farmers, so they have more produce or commodities and they can sell at once. Um, the LIP program was really popular a few years ago when the black buzzards came out. Uh, that's a, it's a disaster program, it's a livestock indemnity program. So if you had losses due to uh, the black-headed vultures or wolves or any of those protected species, they were eligible to be turned in under that program. So it's a, it's a little bit of paperwork. You need to be keeping records, which you should be keeping records anyway, uh, but you kind of have to use those to get that paperwork through. Um, at the very last line there, come and have a seat at our table and let your voice be heard. The COC is the County Council for Farm Service Agency. So it's a really important uh, committee uh, for Farm Service Agency. So it's really important for to have the people that come in that are actually have their boots on the ground or doing this work so they can share those opinions. And you really do make a big difference when you serve on these committees. Uh, so for the farm loan program, there's a lot of different categories here. So it's really important to ask because if you don't think you might qualify in one, there's probably another one that might fit you better. Uh, there's farm ownership loans, operating loans, um, direct, those are guaranteed, I'm sorry, direct guaranteed and micro loans available. Uh, the youth loans became really popular a few years ago. If you have kids that are uh, showing livestock or anything like that, or if they're starting to farm some, the youth loans are a great opportunity for them as well. So for the acreage reporting, um, if you're familiar with the form FSA 578, so that's where you're gonna report on the record of crops from a crop year on a farm. So you need to file that annually with the Farm Service Agency. Um, and the acreage reports provide information for the USDA for eligibility for current or future programs and for historical purposes. So all of these numbers are recorded and used in all these records over the years as well. So the NAP is a non-insured crop disaster assistance program that's going to provide financial assistance for non-insurable crop losses for drought, flood, hurricane, or any other natural disaster. Uh, the LFP, this is a livestock forage disaster program. Uh, this is going to provide compensation for grazing losses for covered livestock on land that is native or improved pasture land um, planned specifically for grazing. The grazing losses must be due to a qualifying drought condition or fire on federally managed land during the normal grazing period for the county. The livestock indemnity programs, which I talked about a little bit ago, it's a benefit for livestock owners and contract growers for deaths. Now these have to be in, in excess of normal mortality and it's a direct result of eligible adverse weather event. So a freeze a few years ago and we had that super late freeze when a lot of the spring calvers were calving, a lot of those qualified under that program. But it depends on the year, it depends on the weather, it really depends on the situation. Um, I always recommend if you've lost one, take a picture as soon as you see it. Uh, if you take it on your phone, it's automatically gonna put a time and date stamp on there. And that's what they're gonna look for. <clears throat> So Natural Resources Conservation Service, as I mentioned, is downstairs as well. Uh, they have a lot of other opportunities there too uh, for grant funding, different projects on the farm. And it's like also a great resource. So if you're wanting to fence out your creeks or you're wanting to lay out a plan for your farm, they're really good to talk to about that and kind of get an idea of everything going on. Identify if there's any waterways coming through the farm, um, anything that should be protected kind of thing. Uh, but they're, they provide technical assistance and financial. They're kind of in charge of the EQIP program that's at the bottom there, Environmental Quality Incentives Program. Um, traditionally, that, that was a lot of feedlots, a lot of manure storage facilities. A lot of that was covered under EQIP. Um, they do have a gateway website you can access for more information. Um, the first step is really getting with your uh, your local person who is John Stork or Ian Young here in Boone County to create a conservation plan and then you kind of work off the financial needs from there. So figure out what you would like to do with the farm, what areas that could potentially turn into a problem. If you, if you know you're gonna feed in an area that's potentially gonna get really muddy, then maybe you should plan ahead of time. You know? And then you can look at the finances from there to see what options are kind of reasonable or, or realistic for you to incorporate. Um, and they do have the conservation activity plan. So if you're interested in transitioning into organic, that does take three years to do that, to get that certification, but they can work with you on that as well. 
Uh, the risk management agency is another uh, factor that kind of works with Farm Service Agency. They operate and manage the Federal Crop Insurance Corporation, the FCIC. Uh, it's a private sector insurance company. They sell and service the policies. It offers market-based risk management tools and solutions to strengthen the stability of ag producers in rural com communities. Um, the five most popular risks, there's production, price or market, financial, institutional, um, and human or personal. So the National Ag Statistics Survey, um, this is committed to providing timely, accurate, and useful statistics to U.S. Ag through the reports and surveys. Um, Extension works with these as well. We basically go in and we enter in how much rain do we get in a week? How, uh, how much is the grass grown? What production stage is corn in currently? Um, and this all goes, goes hand in hand with the census of ag that comes around as well. For acreage reported, different things like that. And I guess it's a good time to do a plug in for the census data. A lot of that affects the funding that comes back to the counties, like funding that could go to roadways, water, that's a big deal around here, getting city water run out through the county. Um, all of that kind of plays into it. So it's really important to send your information in because it really does affect the whole community as far as what services you can get or grant funding for that. So if you have questions, like I said, this is through the Farm Service Agency downstairs. So uh, Mike Benton is the County Executive Director and Laura Schwenke is the Program Technician. Um, Kenda Franks just started as a Program Technician. So uh, their address is listed on the screen here with their phone number. And Mike's email is there as well. So you're welcome to jump on the conference call to ask any questions. I can forward those on to Mike if I can't answer them for you. Um, or if you want to reach out to him directly, you're more than welcome. So I appreciate it. If you all have any questions, please feel free to ask. And I hope you enjoy the session. Have a good day.